The Arms Trade Treaty Baseline Assessment Project, or ATTBAP, seeks to help states in three ways. First, it provides clear guidance on the Arms Trade Treaty, or ATT's, provisions. Second, it helps states identify whether their existing arms transfer control systems fulfill ATT requirements and where elements might need to be developed or strengthened. Third, it serves as a tool to assist states' parties in fulfilling their reporting obligations. ATTBAP has developed this training package to provide online training and capacity building tutorials to enable states to fulfill their arms trade treaty, known as the ATT, annual reporting requirements. Article 13, paragraph 3 of the ATT requires all states' parties to submit annually to the Secretariat by the 31st of May a report for the preceding calendar year concerning authorised or actual exports and imports of conventional arms covered under Article 2, paragraph 1 of the Treaty. The annual reports contribute to the objective and purpose of the treaty by increasing transparency of the global arms trade, building confidence between states' parties and demonstrating application of the provisions of the ATT. This training package, which includes a video and guidance notes, can facilitate the completion of a state's annual report on arms exports and imports. The online training and guidance notes provide advice for compiling information, such as the potential sources of information, and assistance in determining which conventional arms to report. This training and tutorial has three benefits. 1. It can guide government officials as they prepare their annual reports. 2. It can support the development of good practice for collecting data and compiling export and import information and 3. It explains the minimum information required for reporting conventional arms exports and imports and provides concrete examples of conventional arms and other military equipment that could be reported. The online tutorial has five modules. Module 1. History of Multilateral Transparency Instruments 2. Synergies between the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms and the Arms Trade Treaty 3. Data collection sources and methods. 4. Conventional arms identification and categorization. 5. Small arms and light weapons identification and categorization. Module 1. History of Multilateral Transparency Instruments. Module 1 provides an historical background of efforts to increase transparency in the international arms trade and establish reporting mechanisms on international arms transfers. This module will offer descriptions of existing agreements and regimes that are synergistic with the Arms Trade Treaty. The module will provide a brief history of key developments in global efforts towards transparency in the international arms trade, an overview of multilateral transparency instruments and insight on relevant reporting instruments. Comprehensive and transparent reporting on arms exports and imports helps mitigate the risks of secret arms transfers. Such information generates awareness of global arms flows, which in turn creates an environment of responsibility and accountability for arms transfer decisions. Such openness serves as a confidence-building measure and encourages international cooperation. Transparency also supports conflict prevention by contributing towards early warning signals for potential violence and instability. States have undertaken a number of initiatives to increase transparency in international arms transfers in the last 100 years. For example, in 1924, the League of Nations created a statistical yearbook of the trade in arms, ammunition and material of war, with entries of individual countries reporting information on their arms exports and imports. World War II and the Cold War, however, made transparency much more difficult. The international political environment was plagued by a lack of trust and an unwillingness to share information. As a result, non-governmental organisations, such as the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, known as SIPRI, stepped in to try to fill the information gaps. 
In many cases, non-governmental sources of information on arms transfers were often the only sources for insight on international arms transfers available during this period. Yet governments did try to promote transparency within the UN framework during this period, with very little success, as Cold War politics played out on the UN stage through a variety of resolutions. The culmination of these efforts was the 1988 General Assembly Resolution 4375, which requested that the Secretary-General gather states' views on ways and means of providing for more openness and transparency with regard to worldwide arms transfers, and establish a group of government experts, or GGE, to conduct a study on ways and means of promoting transparency in international transfers of conventional arms on a universal and non-discriminatory basis. The willingness to reconsider transparency in arms transfers was renewed in the aftermath of the Gulf War, when governments around the world discovered the large number of weapons provided to Saddam Hussein in the lead-up to his invasion of Kuwait. Suddenly there was a renewed push towards greater transparency in the arms trade, as governments sought to prevent future secret arms build-ups and build greater confidence between states. In 1991, the General Assembly adopted Resolution 4636L on transparency in armaments, which requested that the Secretary-General establish and maintain a register of conventional arms to house data on international arms transfers, as well as military holdings and procurement through national production and relevant policies. The resolution also called on member states to provide information to this voluntary register on their annual arms exports and imports, including details regarding the transfers of seven categories of weapons, battle tanks, armoured combat vehicles, large calibre artillery systems, combat aircraft, attack helicopters, warships and missiles or missile systems imported into or exported from their territory. In 1992, a group of technical experts submitted its report on the functioning of the UN Register of Conventional Arms, and 1993 represented the first year of reporting to the UN Register of Conventional Arms for transfers that had been undertaken in 1992. The register contains a list of country reports on annual arms exports and imports of major conventional weapons systems. Information contained in the annual reports includes the number of items, the state of origin, the intermediate locations, and a description of the transferred weapons. The register initially included seven categories of weapons, battle tanks, armoured combat vehicles, large calibre artillery systems, combat aircraft, attack helicopters, warships, and missiles and missile launchers. Every three years, states convene a group of governmental experts to review the register's scope and provide recommendations for improvement. In 2003, states were encouraged to include information on their imports and exports of small arms and light weapons, referred to as SALW, and were further encouraged in 2006 to provide such information in standardised reporting templates. In 2016, the group of government experts recommended that states report on SALW transfers alongside the existing seven categories of conventional weapons covered by the register. The most recent effort at transparency in arms transfers is the Arms Trade Treaty, which was adopted in April 2013 and entered into force on December 24, 2014. The ATT requires states' parties to submit an initial report on measures undertaken to implement the treaty and annual reports on arms exports and imports to include information on authorizations and or actual exports and imports of the conventional weapons under the scope of the ATT. States' parties may also choose to share and exchange information on transit or transshipment and brokering transfers on a voluntary basis. Additionally, states' parties may choose to provide a voluntary report to the ATT Secretariat on measures undertaken to address diversion. Governments have also pursued other multilateral and regional initiatives aimed at increasing transparency in the international arms trade, such as the Treaty on Conventional Arms Forces in Europe, the Wassenaar Arrangement, the Inter-American Convention on Transparency in Conventional Weapons Acquisition, 
the European Union's annual reports on arms exports, the Organisation for Security Cooperation in Europe's document on small arms and light weapons, and the Southeastern and Eastern Europe Clearinghouse for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, or CSAC, regional reports on arms exports. In addition to regional and multilateral initiatives, some states also provide national reports on arms exports, many of which are publicly available. These reports vary considerably in how much information states provide, as well as in the level of substantive detail offered. National reports tend to contain insights on states' national export control systems and authorised export licences. Some states may also choose to provide descriptive information on the goods as well as the end user or users. In compiling these reports, states use a variety of sources of information, with some states using customs data from the United Nations Commodity Trade Statistics database, also referred to as ComTrade. Module 2 – Synergies between International Reporting Obligations the Arms Trade Treaty represents a landmark achievement for bringing greater transparency to the international arms trade, and it shares many synergies with existing international reporting obligations to help strengthen this norm. In particular, the ATT is linked to the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms, known simply as the UN Register. Article 13, paragraph 3 of the ATT says that the annual report submitted to the Secretariat may contain the same information submitted by the State Party to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register of Conventional Arms. This module examines the synergies in reporting under the Arms Trade Treaty and the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms. A key objective of the Arms Trade Treaty is to increase transparency in the global arms trade by requiring states to submit annual reports on arms exports and imports in addition to an initial report on treaty implementation. Definitions The Arms Trade Treaty does not contain definitions, but the treaty text offers some clues as to what is meant by transfer and what kinds of activities are exceptions to the treaty. In the ATT, transfer is described as the activities of the international trade comprise export, import, transit, transshipment and brokering. The UN Register does not provide a definition for international transfers, but the 1992 report of the UN Panel of Governmental Technical Experts on the UN Register advised that International arms transfers involve, in addition to the physical movement of equipment into or from national territory, the transfer of Title II and control over the equipment. The ATT and the UN Register also provide some guidance about possible exceptions to activities that are considered transfers. The ATT says that this treaty shall not apply to the international movement of conventional arms by or on behalf of a state party for its use, provided that the conventional arms remain under the state party's ownership. The 1992 panel of governmental technical experts provides more specificity, saying that since the supply of equipment by a state to units of its armed forces stationed abroad does not involve transfer of national title and control, such supply is not considered an international transfer. Equipment of a state can be temporarily stored or prepositioned on the territory of another state with no transfer of title and control of this equipment. This is not considered an international transfer. Types of transfers to report the Arms Trade Treaty requires states' parties to report on authorizations and or actual exports and imports of conventional arms covered under Article 2, Paragraph 1. Similarly, United Nations Resolution 4636L calls on UN member states to provide annually information on the number of items in seven categories of conventional arms imported into or exported from their territory in the previous calendar year. The resolution also invites states to provide background information on their military holdings, procurement through national production and other relevant policies. Since 2004, states have also been invited to provide information on international transfers of small arms and light weapons. 
although the ATT regulates imports, exports, transit or transshipment, and brokering of conventional arms, the treaty only requires states' parties to submit annual reports on authorizations and or actual exports and imports of the eight categories of conventional arms covered by the treaty. The ATT allows states' parties to submit to the Secretariat the same information submitted to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register. Reports are also permitted to exclude commercially sensitive or national security information. Authorization versus actual imports and exports. The ATT requires states' parties to report on authorizations and or actual exports and imports of the eight categories of conventional arms covered under Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Treaty. This allows states to provide information on 1. Authorised transfers, whether they have been delivered or not, or 2. Those transfers that have been delivered to their final destination. Some states' parties have provided information only on authorizations, while others have only reported actual exports and imports, and other state parties have reported on both authorizations and actual exports and imports. States' parties are requested in the provisional template to identify if they are reporting on authorizations or actual exports and imports, or both. The UN Register requests that states provide information on actual exports and imports. However, some states have been unable to provide information on actual exports and imports for all conventional arms, in particular for small arms and light weapons transfers, and have therefore provided information on export and import authorizations. NIL Reports in both the Arms Trade Treaty and the UN Register, states have the opportunity to provide a NIL report. A NIL report refers to a calendar year when a state did not have any exports or imports of the conventional weapons that are included in the scope of the treaty or UN Register. States may complete a NIL report for exports and a full report for imports, or vice versa. Conventional Arms the Arms Trade Treaty requires states' parties to include their exports and imports of conventional arms in their annual reports. The categories of weapons included in the ATT mirror those categories included in the UN Register. The seven categories of conventional arms included in both instruments are Battle tanks Armoured combat vehicles Large calibre artillery systems Combat aircraft, attack helicopters, warships, missiles and missile launchers, small arms and light weapons. The ATT requires states to report their imports and exports of small arms and light weapons. The UN Register did not include reporting on small arms and light weapons until 2016 when the group of government experts recommended that states report on SALW transfers alongside the existing seven categories of conventional weapons covered by the register. Parts and Components The Arms Trade Treaty requires that states' parties maintain national control systems to regulate the export of parts and components, where the export is in a form that provides the capability to assemble the conventional arms covered under Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Treaty. The ATT does not, however, require states to report on exports or imports of such parts and components. Similarly, the UN Register does not request the submission of recorded information on components of items associated with the seven categories of conventional weapons covered by the Register. Ammunition the Arms Trade Treaty requires that states' parties maintain national control systems to regulate the export of ammunitions or munitions associated with the conventional arms covered in Article 2, Paragraph 1, but does not require states' parties to report on exports or imports of such ammunition or munitions. Similarly, the UN Register does not include ammunition within its scope and does not request that states provide information on imports or exports of ammunition. Reporting Deadlines 
As part of their arms trade treaty obligations, states' parties are required to submit their annual reports on arms exports and imports to the Treaty Secretariat by the 31st of May. UN member states are also requested to submit information to the UN Register annually by the 31st of May. National Points of Contact Article 5, Paragraph 6 of the Arms Trade Treaty requires states' parties to designate one or more national points of contact to exchange information on matters related to the implementation of the ATT and to notify the Secretariat of and update the Secretariat on these points of contact. The provisional reporting template for the ATT annual report allows states to provide information on a point or points of contact, including name, organisational affiliation and contact information, such as phone number and email. The standardised reporting form for the UN Register also provides an opportunity to provide information for a national contact point. The point of contact for the ATT may be the same as the national point of contact for the UN Register. Completing the reports ATT states parties will notice that the ATT annual report template includes several columns that are not included in the UN Register reporting template. The ATT annual report template includes two columns not in the UN Register reporting template for states parties to indicate whether the information being provided relates to authorizations for exports or imports or actual imports and exports. These additional columns are included to reflect the fact that Article 13, Paragraph 3 provides states' parties with the option of providing information on either authorizations or actual exports and imports, or to provide information on both. The ATT Annual Report Template provides states' parties with the option of providing information on either the number of units or the financial value of conventional arms imports and exports, or to provide information on both. The UN Register Reporting Template requests information only on the number of items imported or exported. States' parties also provide the financial value of their arms exports in national reports on arms exports or as part of information exchanges within regional organisations or multilateral export control regimes. The ATT Annual Report Template omits the column in the UN Register Reporting Template for intermediate location, if any. This column is used in the UN Register Reporting Template for cases where an item is integrated into a system and re-exported. The ATT Annual Report Template has shaded columns for Remarks to indicate that such information is voluntary. The UN Register Reporting Template does not contain such shading. The ATT Annual Report Template has subheadings for the categories of Combat Aircraft and Attack Helicopters enabling states' parties to report separately on imports or exports of manned or unmanned aerial vehicles in these categories. The 2016 Group of Governmental Experts on the UN Register has recommended only the creation of two subcategories for combat aircraft and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Module 3 – Data Collection, Sources and Methods Module 3 provides guidance on sources and methods for data collection to enable states' parties to fulfil their obligation to provide an annual report on authorisations and or actual arms exports and imports in accordance with Article 13, Paragraph 3 of the Arms Trade Treaty. This module provides examples of documents and records that can be utilised to prepare an ATT annual report. These materials can also be used to submit an annual report to the United Nations Register of Conventional Arms, known as simply the UN Register. The module notes some of the tools and processes that have been utilised by states to facilitate the completion of annual reports on arms exports and imports and overcome technical and administrative challenges for reporting. The module has three aims. To understand the different types of data to be collected and reported, to introduce and understand the different approaches for data collection and to learn about the different challenges and solutions for reporting. This module draws upon several potential sources of guidance for helping states prepare an annual report on arms exports and imports. 
The first source is the Arms Trade Treaty text itself. Article 12 on record-keeping and Article 13 on reporting provide some guidance for the preparation of annual reports. Article 12, paragraph 1 of the ATT obliges states' parties to maintain national records pursuant to its national laws and regulations of its issuance of export authorizations or its actual exports of the conventional arms covered under Article 2, paragraph 1. Article 12, paragraph 2 encourages states' parties to maintain records of conventional arms covered under Article 2, paragraph 1 that are imported or authorised to transit or transship territory under its jurisdiction. Article 12 also provides guidance on the potential contents of such records for authorisations and or actual transfers, including quantity, value, model and or type, details of exporting states, importing states, transit and transshipment states, and end users. Article 13, paragraph 3 of the ATT indicates that annual reports on imports and exports of conventional arms may contain the same information submitted by the state party to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register. The second source of guidance for this module is the UN Register. Annex 4 of the 2016 report of the Group of Governmental Experts on the continuing operation of the UN Register and its further development provides some key principles on points of contact that are relevant for the development of reporting processes. The Annex recommends the creation of a national procedures document to help ensure a stable and robust national process for preparing an annual report on arms exports and imports. Such procedures could include the following elements. Identify the different arms transfer reports to be prepared. A clear explanation of the contents and requirements for each report. Assign reporting tasks to specific authorities and positions. Establish deadlines in the process of preparing reports and a mechanism for reminding relevant information providers. A clearly defined collection process for providing information periodically or on an ongoing basis to the individual or individuals responsible for preparing and submitting the national reports. A coordinated collection process that ensures that when the same information is needed for several reports it is collected only once. This saves time and resources and ensures consistency between reports and indicate if the data submitted is based on authorizations or actual transfers. The Annex draws upon the Wassenaar arrangements elements for the effective fulfillment of national reporting requirements, which was adopted at the December 2015 plenary meeting. The key recommendation of the Wassenaar arrangement guidance is to establish and maintain, if appropriate, by national legislation or governmental decision, a procedures document that contains the key elements outlined in the Annex to the 2016 Group of Governmental Experts report. The Wassenaar arrangement guidance also recommends that technical experts who can determine which goods or technology are to be included in the report are involved in its preparation, a mechanism is established for classifying applications for authorizations in such a way that information that is to be reported can be easily retrieved. A repository for data is established. Sufficient staff are trained to ensure that reporting is not hindered by temporary absence or loss of personnel responsible for fulfilling reporting obligations. Other useful sources of information for establishing reporting processes include the International Small Arms Control Standard, or ISACS, Module 320 on National Controls over the International Transfer of Small Arms and Light Weapons, which is available from the website of the United Nations Coordinating Action on Small Arms, or CASA. The chapter on Record Keeping in Weapons and International Law, the Arms Trade Treaty, edited by Claire de Silva and Brian Wood and published in 2015 by Larcier Press. The Southeastern and Eastern Europe Clearinghouse for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, or CSAC, which has developed several tools to support reporting on arms transfers by Western Balkan states. What are the main sources of information that states can use for the compilation of their ATT annual report? The ATT does not explicitly identify the types of documents that are to be used as sources of information for records and reporting. 
However, the International Small Arms Control Standard, or ISACS, module for international transfers provides some guidance on the types of documents and information that could be useful for states' parties to maintain in order to fulfill their ATT obligations, optional provisions and additional good practices on record-keeping and reporting. Three documents are identified as sources of information that states could collate to provide information on export authorizations for their ATT annual report. First, an export authorization, a license or permit. Second, an import authorization. And third, end user documentation, that is, an end user certificate or end user statement. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on export authorizations in its ATT annual report. Three sources of information can be collated by states to provide information on actual exports for their ATT annual report. First, Information provided by National Customs on conventional arms that have passed through designated customs points of exit. Second, information provided by entities that have been authorised to export conventional arms. And third, a delivery verification certificate or comparable document. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on actual exports in its ATT annual report. Two documents can be used as sources of information that a state could collate to provide information on import authorizations for its ATT annual report. First, an import authorization, and second, end user documentation. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on import authorizations in its ATT annual report. Three sources of information could be collated by states to provide information on actual imports for their ATT annual report. First, information provided by National Customs on conventional arms that have passed through designated customs points of entry. Second, information provided by entities that have been authorised to import conventional arms, commercial entities and also government end users. And third, a delivery verification certificate or comparable document. If this documentation contains the recommended elements, then a state party will have the required information for providing information on actual imports in its ATT annual report. Who is responsible for collecting and collating information for reporting? ATT BAP research and analysis of completed ATT BAP surveys reveal that the top five ministries that lead processes for implementing arms transfer controls are the ministries of Economy or Commerce, Defence, Interior, Foreign Affairs and Justice or National Police. Other common government agencies include customs agencies under the Ministry of Finance, national security agencies and specially created transfer control agencies in some states. These ministries and agencies also maintain relevant records for the preparation of an annual report on exports and imports. In some states, the national agency or ministry charged with issuing authorizations is responsible for maintaining the records of these decisions and actual exports and imports. In many cases, this responsibility falls on more than one agency or ministry. For example, the Ministry of Defence could be responsible for authorizations for exports and imports of military list items, while the Ministry of the Interior could be responsible for authorizations for exports and imports of civilian firearms. A key mechanism for an effective reporting process is to ensure that government end-users and commercial entities are obligated to keep records and report regularly to the relevant national authority or authorities on authorizations and actual transfers. Provisions could be included in national legislation or administrative regulations that require reporting by such entities to take place in advance of the deadline for the annual report on arms exports and imports to the ATT Secretariat. Customs agencies can also maintain records on exports and imports of conventional arms. 
One of the main challenges in utilising customs data for maintaining records on actual arms imports and exports is that customs data are classified according to the Harmonised Commodity Description and Coding Systems, or HS, or the Standard International Trade Classification, or SITC, codes, and not the categories described in national control lists. Which methods and tools can be used for sharing information to put a report together? In many states, inter-ministry and or inter-agency cooperation is necessary to gather all relevant information in order to compile an annual report on arms exports and imports. The Wassenaar Arrangement and the 2016 Group of Governmental Experts on the UN Register provide some guidance on good practices for fulfilling reporting commitments. Three components can be identified for establishing an effective process to enable reporting on arms exports and imports. First, a database or single template that can be used as the basis for developing and maintaining a repository of information on authorizations and or actual exports and imports. Second, clear national guidelines for the division of competences in record keeping and reporting and Third, the development of a national submission calendar to establish timeframes for when participating ministries and agencies should provide relevant information from their records in preparation for the submission of an annual ATT report by the 31st of May each year. The development and maintenance of a central data repository may be the most effective means for data collection, collation and reporting. The central collection point for the relevant data should also be responsible for the preparation of the annual report. Ensuring that ATT obligations are understood and that the central collection point has the authority to call upon different agencies and ministries to provide information in a timely manner is also critical. To assist in this effort, provisions on record-keeping and collection of information for use in ATT annual reports can benefit from an explicit provision in national legislation or regulations. The centralised approach can be challenging. An alternative approach is for states to develop a standardised template under which relevant ministries or agencies are responsible for completing the appropriate sections. This process has the benefit of establishing clear national guidelines on the division of labour and responsibility with regard to record-keeping and data collection. Module 4 – Conventional Arms Identification and Categorization. Module 4 provides potential definitions for the types of conventional arms contained in the first seven categories of Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Arms Trade Treaty based upon the category descriptions for the United Nations Register on Conventional Arms, also known as the UN Register, at the time of entry into force of the ATT. Module 5 provides guidance on definitions and categorization for small arms and light weapons. The module has three aims. To foster understanding of the types of conventional arms to be reported to the ATT, to help identify the synergies in the types of items covered by the UN Register and the ATT, and to provide information on the sources that can be utilised to support conventional arms identification and categorisation. This module draws upon several potential sources of guidance for the definitions of the types of conventional arms contained in Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Arms Trade Treaty and for identification and categorisation of these weapons. Article 5, Paragraph 3 of the ATT encourages states' parties to apply the provisions of the ATT to the broadest range of conventional arms. It also instructs that, at a minimum, the national definitions for the conventional arms contained in Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Arms Trade Treaty shall not cover less than the descriptions used in the UN Register at the time of entry into force of this treaty. The ATT entered into force on the 24th of December 2014. This module introduces the minimum definitions using the UN Register descriptions. It also introduces some examples where broader coverage is feasible. Article 13, Paragraph 3 indicates that ATT States Parties' annual reports may contain the same information submitted by the State Party to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register. Therefore, the first source of guidance for this module is the UN Register. 
The UN Register is available online. The About tab on the UN Register website provides the current descriptions for the categories of the UN Register. The reports of the groups of governmental experts on the continuing operation of the UN Register and its further development are also useful resources for understanding the scope of the Register. The UN Office for Disarmament Affairs also produced guidelines for reporting international transfers to the UN Register in 2007, and these guidelines remain a useful resource. Module 1 introduced several regional and multilateral instruments that could be useful for defining, categorizing and identifying conventional arms that could be included in ATT annual reports. For example, the descriptions for the categories of the UN Register drew upon the definitions of the five categories of weapons listed in the CFE Treaty and in accompanying protocols. The protocols also provide an indicative list of models of conventional arms covered by the treaty. These resources have been used for this training module. The descriptions provided in the Wassenaar Arrangement Specific Information Exchange on Arms are also largely comparable to the UN Register category descriptions. There are many similarities in the title categories for the ATT, the UN Register and the Wassenaar Arrangement Information Exchange. The Southeastern and Eastern Europe Clearinghouse for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, or CSAC, has developed several tools to support reporting on arms transfers by Western Balkan states, and that could be useful for ATT states' parties in general. For this module, the Weapons Categorization tool is particularly useful. The rest of this module introduces the UN Register description at the time of entry into force of the ATT for each category of conventional arms contained in Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Arms Trade Treaty, namely battle tanks, armoured combat vehicles, large calibre artillery systems, combat aircraft, attack helicopters, warships and missiles and missile launchers. It provides the minimum definitions for conventional arms covered by the ATT as well as guidance for expanding the scope beyond these minimum definitions. Battle tanks. The definition of battle tanks contained in the UN Register at the time of entry into force of the ATT is tracked or wheeled self-propelled armoured fighting vehicles with high cross-country mobility and a high level of self-protection weighing at least 16.5 metric tonnes unladen weight with a high muzzle velocity direct fire main gun of at least 75 mm calibre. Armoured combat vehicles the definition of armoured combat vehicles contained in the UN Register at the time of entry into force of the ATT is Tracked, semi-tracked or wheeled self-propelled vehicles with armoured protection and capability either A. Designed and equipped to transport a squad of four or more infantrymen or B. Armed with an integral or organic weapon of at least 12.5mm calibre or a missile launcher. The CFE Treaty definition for an armoured combat vehicle explains that Armoured combat vehicles include armoured personnel carriers, armoured infantry fighting vehicles and heavy armament combat vehicles. An armoured personnel carrier is an armoured combat vehicle which is designed and equipped to transport a combat infantry squad and which as a rule is armed with an integral or organic weapon of less than 20mm calibre. An armoured infantry fighting vehicle is an armoured combat vehicle which is designed and equipped primarily to transport a combat infantry squad, which normally provides the capability for the troops to deliver fire from inside the vehicle under armoured protection, and which is armed with an integral or organic cannon of at least 20mm calibre and sometimes an anti-tank missile launcher. A heavy armament combat vehicle is an armoured combat vehicle with an integral or organic direct fire gun of at least 75mm calibre, weighing at least 6 metric tonnes unladen weight, which does not fall within the definitions of an armoured personnel carrier or an armoured infantry fighting vehicle or a battle tank. The armoured combat vehicles category in the Wassenaar Arrangement Specific Information Exchange on Arms also includes tracked, semi-tracked or wheeled, self-propelled vehicles with armoured protection and cross-country capability, specially designed or modified and equipped with organic technical means for observation, reconnaissance, target indication 
and designed to perform reconnaissance missions or for command of troops or for electronic warfare and armoured bridge launching vehicles. Participating states of the Wassenaar arrangement, as well as ATT states parties, could use this description for the collection and reporting of information on international transfers of armoured combat vehicles. Large Calibre Artillery Systems The definition of large calibre artillery systems contained in the UN Register at the time of entry into force of the ATT is guns, howitzers, artillery pieces combining the characteristics of a gun or a howitzer, mortars or multiple launch rocket systems capable of engaging surface targets by delivering primarily indirect fire with a calibre of 75mm and above. There are artillery systems that have a calibre below 75mm, in particular mortars and multiple launch rocket systems, or MLRS. Some of these systems fall within the parameters of the small arms and light weapons category of the ATT. The issue of direct fire artillery, for example anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns, is also not clearly elaborated in the UN Register category description. Some states have reported transfers of anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns as large-caliber artillery. Some anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns could also be reported as small arms and light weapons and are discussed in Module 5. Combat Aircraft the UN Register description of combat aircraft at the time of entry into force of the ATT was Fixed wing or variable geometry wing aircraft designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided missiles, unguided rockets, bombs, guns, cannons or other weapons of destruction, including versions of these aircraft which perform specialised electronic warfare, suppression of air defence or reconnaissance missions. The term combat aircraft does not include primary trainer aircraft unless designed, equipped or modified as described above. Which trainer aircraft are covered? Trainer aircraft that can perform a combat role are covered by the UN Register description. Yet the UN Register description for combat aircraft does not include a description for primary trainer aircraft. The term primary trainer aircraft is not formally defined in the CFE Treaty, but the chapeau of Section 11, Paragraph 3 of the Protocol on Existing Types indicates that primary trainer aircraft are designed and constructed for primary flying training and may possess only limited armament capability necessary for basic training in weapon delivery techniques. Does the combat aircraft category include unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs? The UN Register Combat Aircraft category implicitly covers those unmanned platforms that were versions of combat aircraft or that otherwise fell within the existing definition but not specially designed UAVs, according to the opinion of the 2006 UN Register GGE. The 2013 UN Register GGE expressed a preference for dividing the combat aircraft category into two subcategories, with one subcategory for manned combat aircraft and another subcategory for unmanned combat aircraft. The 2013 UN Register GGE could not agree on changing the description for the category, but recommended that states that transfer unmanned combat aerial vehicles, or UCAVs, and armed UAVs report such transfers. The 2016 UN Register GGE recommended that the UN Register category title and description for combat aircraft be adjusted to include an explicit reference to unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Combat aircraft and unmanned combat aerial vehicles includes fixed wing or variable geometry wing aerial vehicles defined as manned fixed wing or variable geometry wing aircraft designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided missiles, unguided rockets, bombs, guns, cannons or other weapons of destruction, including versions of these aircraft which perform specialised electronic warfare, suppression of air defence or reconnaissance missions. Unmanned fixed wing or variable geometry wing aircraft, designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided missiles, unguided rockets, bombs, guns, cannons or other weapons of destruction. The terms combat aircraft and unmanned combat aerial vehicles do not include primary trainer aircraft unless designed, equipped or modified as described above.
Military Aircraft the 1992 panel of governmental technical experts for the UN Register considered several categories of military aircraft that are not covered by a narrow application of the description for combat aircraft, such as aerial refueling aircraft, reconnaissance aircraft, fixed and rotary wing, airborne electronic warfare equipment, fixed and rotary wing, and airborne early warning and command and control systems, fixed and rotary wing. These types of aircraft are subject to export controls in states that utilise either the Wassenaar Arrangements Munitions List or the EU Common Military List. However, some states do not usually report transfers of such aircraft to the UN Register. Attack Helicopters The UN Register description of attack helicopters at the time of entry into force of the ATT was Rotary Wing Aircraft designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided or unguided anti-armour, air-to-surface, air-to-subsurface or air-to-air -air weapons and equipped with an integrated fire control and aiming system for these weapons, including versions of these aircraft which perform specialised reconnaissance or electronic warfare missions. The CFE Treaty has a category for combat helicopters which includes attack helicopters and combat support helicopters. It excludes unarmed transport helicopters. The CFE Treaty definition for attack helicopters includes two subcategories. A specialised attack helicopter is an attack helicopter that is designed primarily to employ guided weapons and a multi-purpose attack helicopter is an attack helicopter designed to perform multiple military functions and equipped to employ guided weapons. A combat support helicopter is a combat helicopter which does not fulfil the requirements to qualify as an attack helicopter and which may be equipped with a variety of self-defence and area suppression weapons such as guns, cannons and unguided rockets, bombs or cluster bombs or which may be equipped to perform other military functions. Unmanned Rotary Wing Aerial Vehicles As with combat aircraft, there have been discussions within the UN Register GGE about expanding the scope of the attack helicopter category description to include Rotary Wing Unmanned Aerial Vehicles. Neither the 2013 nor the 2016 GGE recommended adjusting the description for the attack helicopters category. Both GGEs recommended that states that transfer unmanned armed rotary wing aerial vehicles report such transfers. The 2016 UN Register GGE considered a potential description for an amended category with two subcategories as follows. A. Manned rotary wing aircraft designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided or unguided anti-armour, air-to-surface, air-to-subsurface or air-to-air -air weapons and equipped with an integrated fire control and aiming system for these weapons, including versions of these aircraft which perform specialised reconnaissance or electronic warfare missions. B. Unmanned rotary wing aircraft designed, equipped or modified to engage targets by employing guided or unguided anti-armour, air-to-surface, air-to-subsurface or air-to-air -air weapons and equipped with an integrated fire control and aiming system for these weapons. Warships The UN registered description of warships at the time of entry into force of the ATT was Vessels or submarines armed and equipped for military use with a standard displacement of 500 metric tons or above and those with a standard displacement of less than 500 metric tons equipped for launching missiles with a range of at least 25 kilometres or torpedoes with similar range. All aircraft carriers and destroyers currently in service or being produced are captured by the warship definition. There are examples of vessels that are below the tonnage threshold, but the transfer of which should be reported due to the fact that they are equipped for launching missiles with a range of at least 25 kilometres. Missiles and missile launchers The UN Register description of missiles and missile launchers at the time of entry into force of the ATT was a. Guided or unguided rockets, ballistic or cruise missiles, capable of delivering a warhead or weapon of destruction to a range of at least 25 kilometres and means designed or modified specifically for launching such missiles or rockets if not covered by categories 1 through 6.
For the purpose of the register, this subcategory includes remotely piloted vehicles with the characteristics for missiles as defined above, but does not include ground-to-air missiles. B. Man Portable Air Defense Systems, or MANPADS. The Missile and Missile Launchers category therefore consists of two subcategories. The UN Office for Disarmament Affairs Guidelines addresses several issues related to reporting transfers of missiles and missile launchers. The 1992 panel of governmental technical experts considered that missiles associated with launchers covered under categories 1 to 4 and launched from equipment in categories 1 to 6 are covered by the category description. The guidelines states that missile launchers integral to equipment in categories 1 to 6 are considered components of that equipment and are not to be reported in category 7. Therefore, a missile launcher that is integral to a combat aircraft would not be covered by this category. But air-to-air -air missiles launched from a combat aircraft would be covered by category 7 if the missiles have a range of at least 25 kilometers. Multiple Launch Rocket Systems, or MLRS, fall within the parameters of large-caliber artillery and should be reported as such. If the rockets have a range of 25 kilometers or more, then the transfer of such rockets is covered by the Missiles and Missile Launchers category. The 25 kilometers range excludes older generations of missiles and rockets and new generations of short-range air-to-air missiles and air-to-surface guided and unguided rockets. Some states report transfers of missiles that fall below the 25km threshold to the UN Register. The UN Register description explicitly excludes ground-to-air missiles and launchers. However, surface-to-air missiles mounted on ships with a range of 25km are included in the scope of this category. If the same missiles are for fixed land or wheeled or tracked mobile launchers, the missiles are considered ground-to-air systems and are excluded from this category. Such considerations do not have to apply to the ATT. The UN Register description for missiles and missile launchers includes remotely piloted vehicles with the characteristics for missiles. The second subcategory for missiles and missile launchers covers man portable air defense systems or man pads. Man pads are an exception to the rule for not reporting transfers of ground to air missiles to the UN register. Man pads have also been classed as small arms and light weapons. The UN register does not provide a description of man pads. The UN Office for Disarmament Affairs guidelines states that for reporting purposes, man pads are broadly defined as surface-to-air missile systems designed to be man-portable and carried and fired by a single individual, and other surface-to-air missile systems designed to be operated and fired by more than one individual acting as a crew and portable by several individuals. The guidelines call for reporting transfers of a complete manpads unit, that is, the missile and launcher or grip stock, as well as individual launching mechanisms or grip stocks. The guidance indicates that individual missiles do not have to be reported to the UN register if not supplied with a launching mechanism or grip stock. Module 5. Small Arms and Light Weapons Identification and Categorization Module 5 provides potential definitions for the types of conventional arms contained in Article 2, Paragraph 1H of the Arms Trade Treaty, namely small arms and light weapons, also known as SALW. The module has three aims, to foster understanding of the types of small arms and light weapons to be reported to the ATT, to help identify the synergies in the types of small arms and light weapons covered by the UN Register and the ATT, and to provide information on the sources that can be utilised to support small arms and light weapons identification and categorization. This module draws upon several potential sources of guidance for the definitions of small arms and light weapons and for identification and categorization. It provides some guidance for a minimum definition for SALW and some indications for broader scope for this category. Article 5, Paragraph 3 of the ATT provides instruction that, at a minimum, the national definitions for the conventional arms contained in Article 2, Paragraph 1H of the Arms Trade Treaty shall not cover less than the descriptions used in relevant United Nations instruments at the time of entry into force of this treaty.
the ATT entered into force on the 24th of December 2014. The most relevant UN instrument that provides a description for SALW at the time of entry into force of the ATT is the Instrument to enable states to identify and trace in a timely and reliable manner illicit small arms and light weapons, also known as the ITI, which was adopted by UN member states in 2005. The ITI defines small arms and light weapons as any man-portable lethal weapon that expels or launches, is designed to expel or launch, or may be readily converted to expel or launch a shot, bullet or projectile by the action of an explosive, excluding antique small arms and light weapons or their replicas. Antique small arms and light weapons and their replicas will be defined in accordance with domestic law. In no case will antique small arms and light weapons include those manufactured after 1899. Small arms are, broadly speaking, weapons designed for individual use. They include, inter alia, revolvers and self-loading pistols, rifles and carbines, submachine guns, assault rifles and light machine guns. Light weapons are, broadly speaking, weapons designed for use by two or three persons serving as a crew, although some may be carried and used by a single person. They include, inter alia, heavy machine guns, handheld under barrel and mounted grenade launchers, portable anti-aircraft guns, portable anti-tank guns, recoilless rifles, portable launchers of anti-tank missile and rocket systems, portable launchers of anti-aircraft missile systems, and mortars of a calibre of less than 100 millimetres. The definition of SALW included in the ITI and the examples of weapons types listed are derived from the 1997 report of the UN Panel of Governmental Experts on Small Arms. The panel reported that, broadly speaking, small arms are those weapons designed for personal use and light weapons are those designed for use by several persons serving as a crew. The types of arms classified as small arms and light weapons are the same as the indicative list in the ITI. Article 13, paragraph 3 indicates that ATT annual reports may contain the same information submitted by the state party to relevant United Nations frameworks, including the UN Register. The UN Register is available online. The About tab on the UN Register website provides the current descriptions for the categories of the UN Register. Since 2004, states have been invited to provide information on international transfers of small arms and light weapons to the UN Register. The UN Register does not provide a definition for SALW. The UN Office for Disarmament Affairs provides some guidance in Guidelines for Reporting International Transfers to the UN Register. The latest version of the guidelines was produced in 2007. It advises those states seeking to provide information on international transfers of SALW to report according to their own situation, but to bear in mind the focus of the UN Register on military weapons, man-portable weapons made or modified to military specification for use as lethal instruments of war. As noted in Module 2, a reporting form has been available since 2006 to assist those states that provide information on international transfers of SALW. The form provides no definition of SALW, but contains most of the subcategories of small arms and light weapons outlined in the ITI definition. The UN Register reporting form also provides the option for states to provide information on international transfers of SALW that do not neatly fit into the subcategories using the heading of Other. There is broad overlap between the ITI definition and the UN Register form for light weapons, although the UN Register form does not include portable anti-aircraft guns or portable launchers of anti-aircraft missile systems. The latter, portable launchers of anti-aircraft missile systems, also known as man pads, are covered by Category 7 of the UN Register. States have been invited to provide information on transfers of mortars of calibres less than 75mm as large mortars are covered by Category 3 of the UN Register. The 2016 GGE on the UN Register recommended that 
the UN Secretary General appealed to member states in a position to do so to provide information on international transfers of small arms and light weapons using the standardized reporting form for international transfers of small arms and light weapons. The recommendation subtly called for a change in the status of reporting on international transfers of SALW based upon a 7 plus 1 formula. The 2016 GGE explained that the 7 plus 1 formula means that international transfers of SALW are reported in parallel with the seven categories of the register, but would not be represented as an eighth category on the standardised reporting form used for the seven existing categories. Therefore, the UN Register reporting form now largely mirrors the ATT reporting form. Module 1 has introduced several regional and multilateral instruments that could be useful for defining, categorising and identifying conventional arms that could be included in ATT annual reports. The descriptions of SALW provided in the Guidance for Wassenaar Arrangement, Information Exchange on Conventional Arms Transfers, are also largely comparable to the descriptions in the ITI. The Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, or OSCE, document on small arms and light weapons of November 2000 defined SALW for the purpose of the document as man-portable weapons made or modified to military specifications for use as lethal instruments of war. The subcategories are the same as for the 1997 report and ITI. The Economic Community of West African States or ECOWAS, Convention on Small Arms, Light Weapons, Their Ammunition and Other Associated Material, also provides definitions for small arms and light weapons that are broadly comparable with those in UN instruments. There are obvious similarities in the title subcategories for SALW in the ITI, the UN Register and Regional Instruments. This module also utilises information provided by states in their submissions to the UN Register and their first ATT annual reports. Five states' parties provided a national definition for SALW for reporting purposes in their 2016 ATT annual report. Belgium, Germany, New Zealand, Sweden and Switzerland. Several sources provide descriptions and guidance that could be useful for reporting exports and imports of small arms and light weapons. The Southeastern and Eastern Europe Clearinghouse for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, or CSAC, has developed several tools to support reporting on arms transfers by Western Balkan states, and that could be useful for ATT states' parties in general. For this module, the Weapons Categorization tool is particularly useful. The Bonn International Conversion Centre's interactive guide on small arms and light weapons also provides useful information. UN and regional instruments do not provide descriptions or definitions for the subcategories of SALW contained in the ATT reporting form. The rest of this module introduces descriptions for these subcategories drawn from the legal commentary on the Arms Trade Treaty authored by Stuart Casey Maslin, Andrew Clapham, Gilles Giacca and Sarah Parker. Small arms. Revolvers and self-loading pistols. Revolvers. Revolvers are handguns with multiple parallel chambers within a cylinder that rotates to place each chamber in turn in line with the barrel. Self-loading pistols. Self-loading pistols are handguns that extract and eject the fired cartridge case immediately after firing and chamber a new round from the gun's magazine. Rifles and carbines Rifles Rifles are long-rifled firearms primarily intended to be fired braced against the shoulder with a barrel length which is typically of 400mm or longer and can be either a manual or semi-automatic mechanism. Carbines. A carbine may be considered any type of short and compact rifle and can be defined as either 1. A short barreled variant of a rifle or 2. A short semi-automatic rifle that is chambered for a handgun caliber cartridge. Submachine guns. Submachine guns are rifled firearms chambered for a handgun caliber cartridge capable of automatic fire and typically fitted with a shoulder stock. Assault Rifles 
Assault rifles are rifles capable of firing multiple shots with each trigger pull, primarily intended to be fired from the shoulder and chambered for a rifle caliber cartridge. Assault rifles are variously described by some sources as automatic rifles, battle rifles, or in the case of short barrel types, carbines. Light machine guns. Light machine guns are rifled firearms capable of firing multiple shots with each trigger pull, intended to be fired from a bipod or mount, and capable of being carried and operated by an individual. UN member states have reported international transfers of general purpose machine guns or GPMGs in the light machine gun subcategory. Other small arms. The ATT reporting form and the UN register form for reporting international transfers of SALW also provide a subcategory for other small arms. Shotguns. Several ATT states parties reported on the international transfer of shotguns in their first ATT annual reports, filing such information in the other small arms subcategory. A shotgun is a man-portable lethal weapon that expels or launches, is designed to expel or launch, or may be readily converted to expel or launch a shot, bullet or projectile by the action of an explosive. Light weapons. Heavy machine guns. Heavy machine guns are crew-served rifled firearms, typically firing multiple shots with each trigger pull, intended for sustained fire at medium, that is 300 meters, to long, or 1,000 meters or more, ranges. The caliber of most contemporary heavy machine guns is in the range of 12.7 millimeters and 15 millimeters. The caliber of such weapons could be up to that of the 20 millimeters of automatic cannon. Handheld underbarrel and mounted grenade launchers. Handheld grenade launchers. Handheld grenade launchers are shoulder fired weapons designed for use by an individual operator and firing subsonic self contained cartridge or caseless ammunition of 20mm to 40mm calibre or more at typical maximum ranges of 400 to 1000 metres. These weapons can be manually loaded single-shot or multi-shot and can be operated manually or via pump action, bolt action or revolver-type mechanisms or from a fixed or removable magazine. Underbarrel grenade launchers Underbarrel grenade launchers are designed to be attached below the barrel of another weapon, typically an infantry rifle or carbine, and can fire similar ammunition to that used for handheld grenade launchers. Mounted grenade launchers. Mounted grenade launchers are crew served weapons operated from a ground or vehicle mount. They are usually belt fed and automatic in operation, giving rise to the terms automatic grenade launcher or AGL and grenade machine gun or GMG. Portable anti aircraft guns. Portable anti-aircraft guns are those machine guns or light cannon of no greater than 20mm in calibre that are distinguished from other types of machine guns by their mounts and sights. Such guns are fitted to mechanical mounts which allow them to rotate in a full 360 degree arc and elevate up to vertical or nearly vertical. The UN Register reporting form does not include a subcategory for portable anti-aircraft guns, but several UN member states have reported the transfer of 14.5mm anti-aircraft guns in the subcategory Other Light Weapons. Portable anti-tank guns Portable anti-tank guns fire high-velocity, primarily kinetic ammunition designed to penetrate vehicle armour. The concept of an anti-tank gun is dated, as portable anti-tank guns are from the Second World War era. Some UN member states have used this subcategory to provide information on international transfers of anti-materiel rifles, or AMRs. Anti-materiel rifles are portable rifles of calibre 12.7mm to 20mm, which have a range of up to 2,000 metres for use against light armoured vehicles. Recoilless rifles Recoilless rifles are direct fire support weapons defined by their rifled barrels and a system of operation in which propellant gases or another countermass such as a powder or liquid are expelled from the rear of the launch tube or barrel. These weapons typically range between 57mm to 90mm in calibre. 
Portable Launchers of Anti-Tank Missile and Rocket Systems Portable launchers of anti-tank missile and rocket systems are weapons that fire a rocket-propelled munition with an explosive warhead designed to defeat tank armour. These have also been referred to as man-portable anti-tank systems or man-pats or MPATs. An anti-tank missile system, often called an anti-tank guided missile or ATGM, is a type of anti-tank guided weapon or ATGW, which launches munitions that are then directed towards their intended target using one or more guidance principles, such as line of sight, semi-automatic guidance or laser electro-optical image seeker, that is, fire and forget. Rocket launchers are unguided and must be manually aimed. Portable launchers of anti-aircraft missile systems Portable launchers of anti-aircraft missile systems are included in Module 4, which discusses man-portable air defence systems, or MANPADs, in the context of the missiles and missile launcher category. Mortars of a calibre of less than 75mm Module 4 noted that the UN Register Description for Large Caliber Artillery covers mortars of at least 75mm calibre. The established definition for light weapons includes mortars up to 100mm calibre. Mortars are a form of light artillery consisting of a simple launch tube and a large stabilising base plate which fire a caseless explosive projectile and are typically employed in an indirect fire roll. Mortars are usually loaded from the muzzle with a projectile that is dropped down the tube and ignited on impact with the bottom of the tube. Other light weapons The ATT reporting form and the UN Register form for reporting international transfers of small arms and light weapons also provide a subcategory for other light weapons. States mainly have used this subcategory to provide information on international transfers of portable anti-aircraft guns. However, one could argue that this subcategory could also be used to cover weapons that are entirely omitted or excluded by definition from the ITI, such as flamethrowers, which function by projecting a stream of ignited flammable liquid, directed energy weapons, including lasers, or electromagnetic projectile accelerators, such as railguns and coil guns.